Hello, welcome. Today I'm going to explain how to build a dipole for HF, in particular the 40 meter amateur radio band. Now through the magic of physics, this antenna will also work on 15 uh, meter band, which is 21 megahertz. Uh, 40 meters is 7 megahertz, obviously 21 is 7 times 3. So due to harmonics and things, it will also tune on 15 meters. You will get a couple of extra lobes instead of one main radiation pattern, but it will still work. You'll still have good fun with it. Uh, let's just jump over to this other screen and I will very quickly uh, tell you how my dipole is built if anybody's interested. So a quick, we'll quickly draw the garden. There's a fence, uh, fence panels, uh, and then that comes back that way. So this is just a wooden fence and then all this here is just grass. Okay, and the other side of this fence is fields, so whatever. Uh, this is just fence panels at the center. We've got a DX Commander pole, telescopic pole. I'm not using the whole length. I'm probably using about five or six meters. I can't remember exactly, uh, but it just goes up. So I'm just using the thicker end of the pole, really, because it's obviously quite stable. As the pole, as you get to the top of the pole, it gets a bit thinner and flimsy. I'm only using the bottom half, so I'm guessing it's probably about six meters high, this feed point. Uh, what happens is the coax comes out of the shack and it just runs across the grass. I do have a line isolator around about here somewhere and all that is is a 240 slash 43 mix uh, ferrite ring and the coax is just wrapped around about 10 or 11 times and I've just taped it up with tape to keep everything in place. So that's about here and that's my line isolator or choke. That's to stop RF coming back down the coax into the shack. Now the question is why don't I have this up at the feed point? Well we'll cover that in a moment. So the, the, it's a 40 meter dipole, half of 40 is 20. So therefore half of that is 10, which means each leg is going to be 10 meters long approximately. So the overall length is 20 meters, that gives us the half wave dipole for 40 meters. So each leg is around about uh, 10 meters and at the end here we've just got an insulator which is just basically a piece of plastic it can be anything you like you could even just you, you can tie uh, the, the cord you can tie the wire straight off to the cord if you really want to uh, the only issue there is uh, I don't know what the issue is to be honest <laughs> I've done it in the past it still works but uh, I guess if it gets wet it's more likely to cause a problem so I guess you need you probably need a good insulator between your cord and your actual wire here uh, so there we go so that's what we've got we've got a line isolator or a piece of plastic at each end uh, insulator I should say and this is just cord here this is just draw cord piece of string whatever you've got handy at the ends tied off to the fence this piece here is the main conducting wire it's just standard antenna wire it can be any wire you like it doesn't really matter uh, as long as it's, uh, it can support itself. The thinner, thinner wire obviously can't cope with as much power as thick wire. The reason for that is uh, the RF actually travels down the outside of the wire. At HF, when you, when you put power into a wire, it travels down the surface. And the, the thinner the wire, the less surface there is, which means there's more resistance because the same amount of power is traveling down uh, less space effectively so it has to cram down less surface area that means there's a higher resistance higher resistance means heat less efficient you're going to lose more heat in the actual wire so that's why you want some decent thick wire uh, for your coax especially if you're running you know 100 watts plus if you're running underneath 100 watts it's probably not going to matter uh, but don't quote me on that so up here what we have is a box in the box on my antenna uh, we've actually got a PL2, uh, to, uh, you know, SO239 socket on the bottom so my coax can come straight up and there's a little plug here underneath uh, to screw into the box. Inside the box all that happens is one wire comes off one way, one wire comes off the other way. There's no unun, there's no, uh, there's no coil, there's no toroid, there's nothing. It's literally the center core comes off one way and the braid goes off the other way. This box doesn't need to be there. You literally could just bring this coax up 
and solder the center core onto here and the car and the braid onto here just tape it up uh, make sure it's not going to pull apart solder it together whatever it would do exactly the same thing the only reason i use this box is because i had it spare in the shed when i was building this antenna now some people might ask why don't i have a choke at this point now the idea of the choke is to stop the power that's coming up the inside of the braid uh, coming back down the outside of the braid and being lost as heat or even coming back uh, to the shack and interfering with the radio uh, also it's going to stop RF that's being transmitted uh, through through the center core from coming back down as well essentially it's the choke off uh, RF uh, current from coming back down the the outside of the antenna uh, wire uh, sorry the coax and uh, just being wasted effectively it forces all of the power down to the elements to be radiated where you want it now the reason i don't have a, a feed point uh, choke is because i'm quite happy for this length of wire between the the ground and the feed point to act as part of the antenna that gives me a slightly yeah this is going to act as a bit of a receive and a transmit is going to alter the properties of the antenna a little bit now i'm sure some people that know way more about this than me will say i'm talking complete nonsense but in my experimentation this has worked for me and that's all that matters what works for you is good enough i'm sure that if i put a feed point choke uh, I'd you know, i might get better signal reports on transmit but maybe i might hear less or, or vice versa but ultimately, what I'm doing is working for me. I'm getting great reports. I can hear a pin drop on the bands, and I'm happy with it. So there we go. I'm not saying copy me. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. So we've got coax, ultraflex 10, coming all the way up to here. That's ultraflex 10 from this point up. Uh, this, this going back this way, including uh, the choke that's wrapped around the core, I think is uh, thinner coax, actually. It might even be RG58, <laughs> dare I say. I can't remember, to be honest. But that length is definitely Ultraflex 10, and this length is something less good. Uh, but there we go. I mean, at HF, it doesn't really matter, does it? Unless we're working the higher bands, that's where it really comes in. This is a 40-meter antenna, remember. I'm not using this on 10 meters, where the losses are going to be much higher. So the coax quality really isn't a factor on this band. Uh, so there we go that is my antenna the feed point is about five or six meters above the ground each leg is about 10 meters and then it comes up two lengths of that is 20 meters which makes my half wave dipole for 40 meters that is it there's nothing more fancy than that there's nothing magic going on anybody could build one of these in five minutes flat just stick your antenna tuner on or your nano vna and uh, if it's resonating too high uh, then you just lengthen your antenna if it's resonating too low so it's let's say it's resonating at 6.5 megs instead of seven then you just shorten each leg equally the same amount uh, until you get it somewhere uh, handy and that is all i did so there we go that is how i built my 40 meter dipole it literally took <laughs> about 20 minutes i didn't buy anything it was just stuff i had in the shed I just wanted to get an antenna up and did it as quickly as possible with bits I had lying around. The whole thing about the feed point choke, you can argue about that in the comments. I'll be here, happy to hear what anybody's got to say. But ultimately, uh, if you've ever watched my live streams or heard me on air, you will know that this thing works and I'm happy with it. And that's all that matters at the end of the day. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.